All right, Millsurf Garage, back with you here with the Remington Model 4. Ever heard of this thing? All right, well, what we got here is basically, it's basically a uh, Remington rolling block design, but in uh, 22. How awesome is that? We have a top tang, no lower tang. Steel butt plate. Um, this is uh, the hammer. This is the rolling breech block. You see there's an ejector in there. Very similar to the... Uh, see that? Very similar to the uh, larger caliber rolling blocks. This is a takedown lever. Couldn't uh, possibly be any simpler than that to uh, have a takedown feature. Nice, uh, finely adjustable rear sight, octagon barrel, nice sleek forend here. Uh, nice compact barrel, you know, design, short barrel, compact design, nice crown. And uh, boom, there she is. So. Let's discuss a little bit about uh, what was going on here. Look at this beautiful forged steel. This like tool steel receiver. Isn't that gorgeous? Man, these things were built good. Oof, they were not fooling around. So Remington, what were they doing back then? This thing, there's, you could probably do an entire hobby's worth of research just on this one gun. They made them for so long. These were made from 1890 to 1933. This particular one, um, I called Remington and gave them the serial number, and they gave me a 1929 date. So this would be like towards the end of production. However, um, you can date them through certain features, and it's a little confusing. The the serial number is on the barrel underneath here. So since this is an obvious takedown design, this receiver part, I mean, you saw how easy that comes apart. It'd be very easy to just put two different ones together. This thing's been around for so many years. I mean, since at least the 20s. Excuse me. Um, so the 20s into the early 30s. So who knows what could have happened, you know, through, uh, through all that time. So, if I'm dating it, if I'm giving Remington a serial number, I'm pretty much sure that the barrel is from 1929. Uh, the rest of it, this this wood or the whole receiver, who knows? But um, let me give you some info on some of the different features it had and some of the history, and then we could use some of that to throw some dating in for potentially the receiver being a different date. But um, these were these were very pivotal in a few different ways. Number one, they were a design that was very unique in a certain way that I don't think any other rifle was like. Um, and they also they um, they have the distinction of probably being the first rifle ever chambered in a rimfire cartridge. Reason being that in the late nineties. Um, there were guns like there were cartridges like the Flobert cartridge and the Smith and Wesson number one cartridge. I think it was called. Let me, let me get out my literature here and take a quick look. The uh, yeah, the Smith Smith and Wesson number one was a twenty two short cartridge that was chambered for a handgun. And uh, you know this was just a few years after the Civil War, and um, and uh, these. They, they 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 were larger the ones that they were would have been making back then using the Smith and Wesson number one in this Flobert cartridge would have been larger rolling block rifles um, that were chambered in these cartridges but they were scaled down later on and evolved into this rifle and uh, this thing was crazy popular very very popular so uh, the different types. The nearest I could tell just with my research, um, uh, I really don't know much about these things. I I bought this one um, 
kind of like not even knowing that these other styles were around, but I'm kind of glad I ended up where I ended up because I, I think I would like this one the best. Now, the three different types are a solid frame, which did not obviously have a takedown feature. That was from 1890 to 1900. The takedown like this one with the lever, this lever here, was from 1901 to 1925. And that's when you say, like, hey, um, thought you said yours was from 1929. Hence the problem. Either the information that I'm getting, I did get it from a couple of different sources. But either that information is not correct or Remington's is a little off or, or it might actually both might be true. It could be that this receiver is older than the barrel. So uh, the, the lever take down 1901 to 1925, then they change this to a screw type, kind of like what we're more often seeing in uh, like this, that we're more often seeing in uh, this type of screw in um, the, the rifles that I've been uh, featuring. By the way, this book, Walnut and Steel by uh, Bill Ward. It's awesome. Lots of nice pictures. I've been using it. Also, he uh, came out with a second one, Walnut and Steel 2. <laughs> kind of like Jaws, but uh, then more stuff. That's how much... Very popular that it actually necessitated a second book. Anyway, I'd like to give them props. Those books are not expensive. I think you could... Each of them is under 20 bucks. Um, and they're a wealth of information if you're into this stuff. So I hate to just show the pictures and do stuff like that without giving credit. Um, okay, so that was 1926 to 1933, the screw takedown. So the three different styles. Let's see, I don't really have this written down. Why didn't I write this down? Here's the three different styles, okay? One was a standard, <laughs> standard. This might be the standard style. Number two is what they called a Boy Scout model. This had a 28-inch barrel, an extended fore-end with a handguard, and a bayonet lug. And that was later called the military model. And, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. That was called the... that was Yeah, that was called the military model. And then there's a very rare version of the military model that was known as the cadet model that had no handguard or bayonet lug, but the... 28 inch barrel and the extended forend. Uh, yeah. See, that gets all convoluted. You really gotta, you really gotta start looking around at pictures on these things and Googling and checking them out. But they were cheap. These things back then were $5 or they were $8 and they went down to $5. Just looking through here of the history. They were, uh, they were interesting in the respect that it basically was a little mini rolling block. These things were not a joke. You'd look at this and you'd say, oh, this is like a little rolling block toy. No, these parts here, you, you could look, these parts are not fooling around. Look at that, I showed you, look at that, that ejector there is not kidding around. That will, that will flick a 22 short brass 30 feet. That, that is some serious positive ejection there. There's that firing pin. And, uh, Here's what's weird about these things. This is the odd claim to fame that these things have. They are the only rifle, the only firearm, except for like probably, I would say, um, rifles that fire from an open bolt position obviously do not fit into this uh, distinction. But they are the only type of design where the breech locks after sear disengagement. Now, what that means is that right now, let's say a round goes in there and now it's ready to fire. It's ready to fire and at the moment that the sear disengages, but the hammer hasn't really fell yet, this will just flop open this right here at the moment that it disengages now as it travels down and heads towards the fire the firing pin that's the firing pin right in there 
as it heads down, it obviously locks. That's how the two, these two pieces work together to make a very positive locking design. So you would think that a rifle where when you're pulling the trigger, the breech is not yet locked and it kind of locks on the way towards actually firing. You'd be like, well, that would be a kind of like a dangerous design because if things don't work right there, it's going to be an accident. It's actually one of the safest designs where there's it's almost no chance of there being an accident. Because the only way that hammer is going to contact that firing pin is if it's all the way forward in front of blocking, very strongly and positively blocking the breach from opening. Awesome design. And uh, where does this design come from? Well, this design comes from here. I mean, this is its pop. And, you know, you could look at it and see. They were, uh, they were very proud of the original rolling block design to not be uh, screwing around. Now, um, this rifle right now is just a guest star here. But we will do, I never even did a video on this rifle. I think I did one when I first bought it where it was because it was it was in very very bad shape as you find these they're usually very very dirty and um this is the uh here's a book that you would use this is a, a lame george layman remington rolling black military rifles of the world and this will break down for you some of the things like in this see this site right here it's like a special kind of sight. It shows how uh, the extractor here, called the Days Patent Extractor. This is the extractor that this rifle has. There's a million different kinds of these things, these rolling blocks. These shorter ones. But these, this number four, it's not in here because these are talking about military rifles. Now, uh, again, it's, it's the same thing. It's just a much larger, more robust design for, um, for center fire cartridges, but same exact principles following the same design. Awesome. And, uh, we will be back with this uh, Remington rolling block for a video. It is just guest starring now, but I just wanted to show you how it's uh, it fits in that family. This wasn't made as a toy. This wasn't made as a facsimile, as something to be like, uh, you know, this was definitely made to to be a smaller tool. It's like when you buy a screwdriver set, there's a small screwdriver and a big screwdriver. It's not like the small screwdriver is any less a screwdriver. It's just smaller. These are just smaller. They have a different purpose. They might suit different hands better, but they were just as serious. They were built just as awesome, and uh, the quality was definitely there. So uh, this guy is chambered in, let's see, short or long. How weird is that? I don't know if we've come across one of those yet. Short or long, no long rifle. I know it's been really hard to find longs lately, but um, I checked. They make these these snap caps a little smaller than they're supposed to be, just so that um, they will fit uh, without gouging up against rifling in a chamber or anything so they do fit so what's cool about these is that when you when you first load it you can uh you drop it right on the gate there see that <laughs> it's like it sits on the edge of the extractor and when you close it there it is and there is a half cock position here and what that does is that so that you could carry it like this because if you're carrying it like this number one if you touch the trigger it's going to fire 
Number two, if anything brushes against here, it could bring that out of battery. And if that's out of battery, when you do go to fire, you're going to get nothing. This obviously has to be closed. This is part of how this design works, too. You can't pull the trigger if it isn't closed. And then once it's closed, once you pull the trigger, then it won't open. You know, it's, it's a fascinating design with just these two parts, how they work together, like dancing. But uh, the half cock position, so that you could load it, pulling the trigger now does nothing. And this won't move so that when you want to fire just a simple click back and pull the trigger to drop and the this ejector is so powerful I had to put my hand back here to make sure I don't lose this uh, hopefully I'll catch it Oop, I didn't and it shot across the shop now see that's no joke that will work it might not fly that far once the brass is expanded, but the reason why it snaps out like that is to pull it out even if the brass expands, you know what I mean? So it doesn't just click and then it's just sitting there and you got to pull it out with your finger. It will shoot out of there, even when it's fire formed to the chamber. So, uh, yep, there it is. Let's get a look at these uh, graphics on here if we can. Let me probably zoom a little bit. It might, look a, it might be a little easier to see. There it is, Model 4. Now, this is part of the dating that I did. See how it says Remington, Union Metallic Cartridge Company. Remington Works, Illion, New York, USA. Nearest I can tell, there's the Remington trademark scrolling in the short or long uh, chambering indicator there. Um, but from what I read, um, when it says... Where did I write this down? Here. When it says patent, uh, when it says Union Metallic Cartridge Company, that printing was used from 1911 to 1916. See, first I broke it down that I told you they used from 1901 to 1925. Were those the dates I gave you? Yes, from 01 to 25, use this lever and not the screw so that kind of dates the receiver from 01 to 25 but then i'm reading that from 1911 to 1916 is when it had this union metallic cartridge company printed on here however this is the same barrel that has the serial number where remington is giving me 1929 so the difference between the latest it would be was 16, from 16 to 29. That's a considerable difference. That's 13 years. So somebody's information isn't correct. And I would say it's whoever's saying that this Union Metallic Cartridge Company is written. I, I would say that Remington's uh, information is correct, that the barrel is probably from 29. But I would think that it is a different receiver assembly here. And it's probably more in the uh it's probably more in the uh, what do you call it in the 20s i would think but again that's just a guess that's just what we have to go by sometimes it's just it's just guessing well what happened here i think i got a low uh low battery indicator i forgot to plug you guys in let's see if it's not too late made a decision not to do videos over again otherwise I do them like 17 times now let's close that we're back sorry about that now I got you guys I think I got you plugged in let me see yep now we're plugged in so we're good anyway I'm just about at the end anyway what else is there to say about this thing it's so simple it's just it's incredibly simplistic the wood on this guy is beautiful this when I bought this this you can see it's a little off still down here. And for some reason, this uh, butt plate was totally tweaked. And uh, you see this like weird roller coaster shape to it or whatever. I had to shape that like myself. It's not easy. If it was just flat, that would be easy. But I don't have like a weird, you ever see those anvils where it's shaped, it's all, it has all weird shapings all over it, like those parabolic kind of curves all over the anvil. That's for having different curves where you could hammer on it to shape metal, but I don't have one of those, so I just kind of had to, you know, wing it on my own. 
using a uh, sandbag and a hammer. But I got it uh, pretty decent. Nobody would notice that it's off, I don't think. No, actually, that's a mint job. <laughs> that was awesome. I did good on that. Yep. And then there was a period I thought that maybe these should be loose to allow these to rotate properly, but tight is the way to go. Definitely loosened up and started really functioning properly. Um, loosened up. I haven't shot this one. This I have not yet used. So if there's a range video in the future, we're going to see this guy. Now, come on. What What is a better rifle for a young gentleman or lady? You know, you're son or your daughter wants to go to the range with you you know like how much safer can it be you know what i mean it's there's absolutely no chance of um of anything rupturing in your face only because um uh, just the the nature of how this thing closes a 22 short there's no way with this closed and that closed there's no way a 22 short is going to break any of this you know what I mean? I mean, definitely check it out really good, but the straight this thing is strong enough to fire like handgun sent to fire cartridges. I, I like I'm telling you, it's it's definitely that strong. And uh for like twenty two shorts, this is definitely overkill. But uh that's exactly what you want. And you teach, you know, patience and marksmanship marksmanship because it takes a while to kick out the cartridge, put a new one in, close it, get reseated back onto your target again. You know, so semi-automatics are something that should be worked up to, you know what I mean, when you're first learning to shoot. And uh, this would be a good way to really get your feet wet. Plinking forever. CB caps, CCI CB caps. One of those little metal, those steel things that spin around, a couple of those. And a uh, decent sized backyard with some land that you own around it. And boom, you're ready to go. So anyway, there we go. Millsurp Garage is out. And uh, we're coming back. What do we call? We did, you want to, we want to leave these, uh, we done with these 22s? Can we, uh, you know, this was one of my favorites here. Um, I could still feature a couple more. But uh, I think you guys have had enough. The lawn looks really green. The weather looks really beautiful. And uh, I guess we could say the nice weather's here and it's time to it's time to branch out into some centerfire rifles. So here we go. Alert your friends. Let's see now. Let's see if the views, if I start doing some more popular centerfire rifles, let's see if the view count on these videos picks up we'll do some like demographic studies let's see if uh let's see if um we could raise our popularity to the channel just by featuring some more mainstream guns and when i say mainstream i'm just talking centerfire we're definitely not going uh into ars or anything here we're gonna i'm gonna fuck i'm gonna feature the couple of rifles that you guys have been uh commenting about here and there because it uh, sounds like you were getting a little antsy. So I'm going to take a look back through the comments and pull those out first. Maybe we'll do this Remington rolling block uh, soon. So I don't want to put too much time between the... Uh, we'll do the Remington rolling block and we'll feature this as a guest star. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll do that later in the summer. That'll be fun. I love the rolling block, though. That one's chambered in 7mm, by the way. And we will have fun with it. Anyway... Uh, so here we are. We're at the end of our 22 journey. I appreciate everyone that hung in there and the fans of these 22s. You guys were great. You guys were very understanding. And um, here we go. We're going to fire it off this weekend. And we're going to get started with... Uh, we're going to get started with a range video for next week. We're going to do a gonna feature a rifle this weekend and a range video next week where we'll take out some of these 22s hopefully i can get someone to come with me to the range to help me video because that's the biggest pain in the ass and instead all you guys have a good one and uh see you all next time